They say dress to impress. We say Photoshop to impress. It's not about making massive changes and catfish people through your dating profile, but it's all about those small changes to represent the best version of yourself that you already are. In this video, we'll learn how to edit your selfie in a classy way and make you the star of the show. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and I would love for you to follow along with your selfie. But of course, if you want to download this and follow along, you're most welcome. Check the links in the description. When editing photos like this, one of the biggest confusions is where to start or what to do next. Here's my approach and you can use whatever approach that deems fit for you. Look at the big problem, fix that and look at the next problem, fix that and go to the next problem and try to do that in a way that is most non-destructive. Keep in mind, there are no right or wrong answers. Just fix problems. In this case, the cropping is absolutely off. So let's press C for the crop tool or you can directly select it from here. You can choose to have it square, 4x5, whatever you want. I'm going to keep it square at the top and then crop it like so. Maybe this will work a little bit from the side as well. We want to crop that line and this works for our image. Now, if you're doing professional mirror selfies in your home, you can always clean the mirror up in real life. And I would always recommend that much easier to do than in Photoshop. But if you're out and about, you have no control over it. In this case as well, you see all the dust and the smudges all around that we need to clean up. And we can easily do so by creating a brand new layer. Let us name this layer cleanup. And you can use your favorite technique to remove all of this. For me, I usually like to use the remove tool. You just want to make sure for little stuff, Generative AI is turned off, Sample All Layers is checked and Remove After Each Stroke is checked as well. Just makes stuff easier. Circle around it, gone. Loop around it, gone. Similarly here, it's very easy to do. You just have to take your time to do it all throughout the image. Now, I'm not going to make this boring. I've taken the time to clean everything up. Here is the before and here is the after. As you can clearly see, all of these details have been cleaned up before See these smudges after all gone, even beside the lamb and the walls before. See all those discrepancies after gone. Now it is time for us to do a little bit of retouching only if required. In this case, I'm not going to do a full blown frequency separation, dodging and burning, but you are free to do that if you feel like it. I'm just going to remove the blemishes. Let's create a brand new layer. Let's name this blemishes by double clicking on the text of the layer. You can go back to the remove tool and although I cannot find anything major to remove, maybe little blemishes here and there, I'm going to remove the eye bags or darkness under the eyes. Let's see if we can fully remove that. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Similarly, right here as well, gone. Now that must be too much. So I'm just going to decrease the opacity. So let's keep it at about, what do you think? 72. That works. Now take your eyes away from your work a bit and then look back at it again. You'll start to see some new problems. And in this case, the mirror was kind of deformed. Have a look. Things are bending right here. Things are not straight. They are quite deformed. And we need to fix that to the best of our abilities, right? Now keep in mind these deformations are not uniform. So there is no slider that we can pump up to easily fix that. We have to manually do it on the image. For it, press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E with the topmost layer selected. This creates a stamp visible layer at the top, which means a merged layer of everything you see on the canvas right now. Let's name this Liquify because that's what we are going to apply. Let's go to filter, convert for smart filter so that whatever filter we apply, we can change the values later. Let's go to filter and then Liquify. With the forward warp tool selected and a low pressure, you want to make sure pin edges is checked. Let's make the brush larger because these deformations are large. Let's make it large and simply push it in to make it straight like so. Take your time, do it slowly and gradually. Now this is mostly all right, although it needs a bit of straightening. Now while we are at it, why not fix stuff on the subject as well? Now my hairstyle was kind of botched with the wind a little bit. So this side is not very balanced. So let's pull it out just a little bit. This seems fantastic. Here's the before and here is the after. Major change. Hit OK. Now if you want, you can do a round of straightening. It is entirely optional. Your image may need it. It may not need it. I leave that to you. Now what does straightening do? Have a look at this line and then have a look at this line. They are not parallel. So straightening fixes all of that. Here's how to do it. I recommend doing it on a separate layer. For it, let's press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E again with the topmost layer selected. This creates a stamp visible layer at the top and let us name this straighten. As usual, let's go to filter, 
convert for smart filters and then go to filter camera raw filter inside of that go to the geometry section select this icon here and let's just simply draw lines along these lines let's do it here as well you want to make sure everything is lining up see straight Similarly, let's do another line here and another line here. Absolutely straight, right on the money. Here's the before. See, things are quite bent, not as straight, perpendicular or parallel. Here's the after. Perfect. Once you're happy, hit OK. Now it is time for us to bring all the attention towards the subject. And how do we do that? Where does our attention go in a photo, except for the obvious, of course? to the brightest spots. So similarly, we have to make our subject brighter without losing details. So let's make a selection of the subject, pick any of these three tools, the object selection, quick selection, or the magic wand, and at the top, click on select subject. In the later versions of Photoshop, it does an incredibly accurate job of it. Once you have a selection in place, let's create our favorite curves adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. To make the bright areas brighter, let's take this slider on the right, to the left and to see which areas are losing details you can always hold the alt key or the option key and drag it like so so i'm going to drag it till this point this works for us although we are losing certain details here but that's fine let's select this press ctrl or command g put just this one layer inside of a group why so so that you can have one more mask for the same layer so with this group Let's click on the mask button here and we need to remove it from areas where we are absolutely losing details. With the mask selected, take the brush, black as the foreground color and just remove these areas. That's all. Anywhere you feel you're losing too much detail, you can paint there. But mostly, this looks fantastic. Here's the before, here's the after. Let's not forget to name the layers. Let's double click on the group and let's name this highlights back to the video and the next thing we need to do to separate the subject from the background to make the subject the showstopper we need to add some shadows in the background some darkness there for it again what are we going to create a curves adjustment layer click on the adjustment layer icon and let's pick curves you need to make sure it's not inside the highlights group it is separate at the top let's take the rightmost point and just bring it down like so maybe till about this point it's enough shadow but we only wanted it in the background so how do we take it away from the subject masks and do we need to create the mask again no right we already have the highlight mask here let's open up this group let's copy this mask hold the alt key or the option key click and drag and drop it here yes we want to replace it now this is exactly the opposite of what we wanted it is darkening the subject we want to darken the background so select the mask press ctrl or command i to invert it now that looks like something. Now definitely we don't want to darken the entire background because there are lights here, lights at the top, there's the ground. So we need to make some subtractions for that as well. We're going to use double masking, just as we did with the highlights. With this layer selected and just that layer selected, press Ctrl or Command G to put just that layer in a group. And with that group selected, click on the mask button. Now you have two masks for the same layer. Now with this mask, you can take the brush. Let's close it by the way. Make the brush very, very large. With black as the foreground color, let's dab once here. There you have the light. There you have another light here. Fantastic. And we need some light at the top, like so. Great. And some in the ground as well, because the light is falling there. You can always modify all of this. Take your time to add more lights here and there. I'm going to zoom out a bit more and add a little more at the top, like so. This works. Let's name this group shadows and for clarity let's close all of these groups now if you're feeling like adding a little bit of special effects we can do that too for example we can turn on this turned off light and that's actually fun to do let's create a brand new layer at the top by clicking on this button take the brush white as the foreground color you can always press x to toggle between the foreground and the background color just dab in the center like so press ctrl or command t this is not the camera flash although that would have been a great idea Hold the Alt key or the Option key and then when you resize, it resizes from the center. If you also hold the Shift key, it does not maintain proportions. And this is what we want to do. We want to squish it like so. Let's place it here. Squish it even more like so. And make it even smaller like so. All right. Now, once you have done that, hit Enter or Return. Now, here's a nice trick. Double click on the right hand side of the layer. This will open up the layer style dialog box. Inside of that, uncheck Transparency Shapes Layer hit OK. And now when you change the blend mode to color dodge, which brightens it, have a look. This is just so bright. It's blowing everything up. So we need to decrease the fill here. 
fill controls the projection. It's different from opacity for special blend modes. So let's decrease the fill. It controls how it interacts with the layers underneath it. So I'm gonna keep it around, what do you say about 48 or 46? That's nice. Press Ctrl or Command T and you can always move this around, see what works for your photo. This is nice. Hit enter or return. Now there is some extra light leaking outside the window for it. Click on the mask button and then take the brush with black as the foreground color. Just erase the part on the outside. That's all. Not big of a deal. Now to add a little more glare to the light, let's create a brand new layer. And in this layer, select the gradient tool and let's drag in a radial gradient. You want to make sure you choose the radial gradient from the top and let's do something like so. Fantastic. You can also use this to make it round or ellipse, up to you. I'm going to keep it this way. Let's pick the colors. Let's double click here. By the way, if you're using newer versions of Photoshop, you'll be able to see this on screen. You want to make sure gradient is selected right here. Double click here. Let's pick light yellow, something like so. Hit OK. For this section, double click here. Let's pick an orange-ish color like so. Hit OK. Now, as it reaches this section, it should become transparent. So for it, double click on the symbol of the adjustment layer. You can single click here. In the orange section, select the top slider and set its opacity to zero. Simple. Hit OK. Hit OK again and you're done. Now let's change the blend mode from normal to screen because screen is the blend mode which brightens. There you go. There you see the glare. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Let's decrease the opacity to about 46 as well. That way, it looks natural. Let's group both of these layers. Select the first one, hold the Control or Command, select the second one, Control or Command G, and let's name this Light. Now, since there is light at the back, there's gonna be some edge highlights to make the subject stand out even more. For it, let's create one more Curves Adjustment Layer by clicking on the Adjustment Layer icon, choosing Curves. Also, we want it to have the same mask as that of the highlights. So let's open this up and copy this mask. Hold the Alt Q, the Option key, click and drag and drop right here. Replace. Yes. Now select the symbol of the adjustment layer to make changes. And we're going to take the rightmost slider to the left like so. Now we are losing details. Don't worry about that. This is only for the edges. Let's focus only on the edge. Now, although this is fine, we also want this to be yellowish. So how do we make it yellow? Let's go to the blue channel. Blue is the opposite of yellow. Remember that. Red is the opposite of cyan. Green is the opposite of magenta. Blue is the opposite of yellow. Let's decrease the blues to make it more yellow. This is fine, but it's also becoming quite greenish. So let's go to the green channel and decrease greens as well slightly. There you go. And we can also go to the red channel and slightly increase the reds, very slightly. And the highlights work brilliantly. Now we just need to limit it to the edges. How do we do that? How do we create another mask for the same layer just to limit it to the edges, but also keep it limited to the subject? Simple, we have done this before. With this layer selected, press Ctrl or Command G and create a mask of that group. That way you have two masks for the same layer. With this mask selected, press Ctrl or Command I to invert the mask. Now you can take the brush with white as the foreground color. Just paint softly around the edges like so. I actually recommend going with a lower flow so that you can paint more accurately. Let's take a look at this area. I'm going to paint slowly and gradually all the edge highlights. Let's increase the flow, zoom out, and let us not also forget this area might have some highlights too. So let's paint that in white, like so, and erase the extras. Adding a bit more intensity here as well, even at the top. And let's name this layer Edge Highlights. Let's have a look at the before and after. Before, after, see how much character it adds to the subject. And if at any point in time you feel like you need to increase the intensity, you can always double click on the symbol and just take it even more to the left, like so. So I'm gonna go even further and keep it at this level, before, after. That's pretty amazing. And you can always decrease the overall opacity later. So select the group and control the opacity from here as well. So I'm gonna keep it at about 78. That seems nice, before, after. Now it is time for us to play with colors. If there's a particular color in your image that you want to make it pop, you can just selectively do that with the help of the hue saturation. Before that, let's close this group, click on the adjustment layer icon and choose hue saturation. We want to target the blues in the blazer. So let's pick that and just for the sake of it, increase the saturation and the hue just to make sure everything is being affected. If not, let's play with the range. Let's increase it from this side 
and from that side just to make sure everything in the suit is being targeted. Let's bring it back to zero by double clicking on this slider like so. And I just wanna make it pop. So I'm gonna increase the saturation. So let's keep it at about 28 and there you go. That makes a massive difference. So here is the before. See, it's a bit faded and here is the after. It adds that pop. Wait for it, there's more pop to be had for it. Let's also try adding a color lookup table. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose color lookup. Now you can use any color lookup of your choice, but Photoshop built-in comes with a pretty good set of color lookup tables. In this case, we need to add some warmth. And one of my favorite LUTs for adding warmth is the crisp warm right here. But this may be too much. So let's decrease the opacity. Keep it at around, actually, 20%. Now this was all about color. You can also go further into this. You can get into skin tones, color grading, but let's not make this video four hours long. So let's select the first adjustment, hold the control or command, select the second one, control or command G to keep everything organized. Let's name this group color. Now to add more attention towards the subject, let us try some vignetting. For it again, we're gonna create a curves adjustment layer. And this time we will brighten the face part. Select the hand, let's pick one of those areas, Click and drag it up to slightly brighten it. And maybe we'll darken all of these areas like so. All right, this is a simple curve. You can always take your time and adjust it to your liking. This is fine. Now we only wanna brighten the middle subject areas. For it, with the mask selected, select the gradient tool here and let's pick a gradient from white to black. You wanna make sure it's a radial gradient and let's drag one like so. And this kind of works incredibly well for the subject. Now we need to darken the rest of the areas. For it, let's create one more curves adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon, choose curves again. And this time we're gonna take it down like so. But we wanna do the opposite. Now you can copy this mask and invert it, but I wanna create something of my own. Press X to toggle between the foreground and the background color. And you can pick the first gradient, black to white. And let's just drag like so. And with a little bit of vignetting, it makes a massive difference. Select the first layer, hold the control or command, select the second one, control or command G. Let's name this vignette. And here my friend is the before, here is the after. More attention. Now we are almost done, but there's one problem with it. If you zoom in, you'll notice that it's a bit soft. It's not very sharp. So what do we do? There are two approaches we can take. First approach is using AI softwares and upscaling to kind of sharpen it back like Topaz Photo AI, or use this to our advantage and add some grain and create that kind of an effect. So let's go for the latter. For it, press Control, Alt, Shift, and E to create a stamp visible layer at the top. Let's go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters, and let's go to Filter again, Camera Raw Filter. One of my favorite ways to add grain is through Camera Raw. It feels so much more natural. Let's zoom in a bit and the first thing we'll do is sharpening it a lot by going to the detail section and increase the sharpening like a lot, a lot. Then hold the Alt key, the Option key, click and drag and increase the radius just to see which areas you are sharpening. I'm gonna keep it at about 2.0. This is nice. Detail, we don't want much. There you go. So here's the before, here's the after. It adds a bit of sharpening. After that, let's add some grain and let's add too much grain just for that effect. In the effect section, increase the grain here. And we are going to add a lot. Also, let's increase the size as well. Let's go with 42 and let's increase the grain to 60 because why not? I know it's a lot, but that's the effect that we are going for. Hit OK, and now it looks like a wonderful textury image. You know where we started? Let's take a look. Here's the overall before, and here is the after. This is crazy. So that's how to make your selfies look the best, look the part in Photoshop. There are no fixed steps. There is the approach. And the approach is you open your image and you look at the biggest problem and you fix that. You look at the next big problem and you fix that. And you continue fixing things that bother you and you continue adding things that make the image better. All in all, the goal always is to get more attention towards the subject and create a separation between the subject and the background. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks, or tutorials. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.